What's going on everyone? In this video, we're going to break down the concept of volume and look at its significance when paired with candlestick charts. I'm going to show you how to read the volume bars on the chart and how to find the data used to generate these bars in the trade history. Let's continue discussing the price chart. We started out by breaking down the trade history in GDAX, and we showed how the trade history can be sliced or partitioned into groups. We saw that each group is used to generate a candlestick. If we have a slice of trade history, all we have to do to build the corresponding candlestick is pick out the open, high, low, and close values in the group. These values are also known as OHLC values for short and are used to build each candlestick. The intervals or periods that determine the size of each slice are arbitrary. We could choose any value for this, but the most common value is a one day interval. We noticed in the last video that candlesticks take an arbitrary number of trades in any given period and transform this data into a single candlestick with only four values. We lose all information regarding the number and size of the trades that occurred in the period. This is where volume comes in and is why we usually see a volume overlay by default on most candlestick charts. Over in the trade history, we can see that the time and price values were used to generate the candlesticks, but the trade size was not used to do this. The trade size is used to generate the volume bars we see for each candlestick or group on the price chart at the bottom. In the trade history, the trade size for each trade is listed and on the price chart, the volume is the total amount or size of the asset that was traded in each period. This fact allows us to calculate the volume manually by looking at the trade history and verifying that the volume in the chart matches what we see in the trade history. The open, high, low, and close values for the last candlestick are displayed at the top and the volume is also listed. We can see the V for volume right here with a value of 41. This tells us that the volume bar down here represents 41 Litecoin traded in this period. To verify this, all we need to do is add up all of the sizes for each trade in the last group. I've already done this for all three groups here in this spreadsheet. I've listed all of the trade sizes for each trade for groups one, two, and three. These values are rounded roughly to two decimal places. So the totals are a little off, but you can see that it's good enough to verify. GDAX is reporting 41 Litecoin traded in the latest period, and the spreadsheet says 40.73. This is close enough for us to conclude that the displayed value of 41 is indeed the sum of the size values from the trade history in the last group. Additionally, it's hard to see, but the previous volume bar is just slightly higher than the first one. And this is also what we can see in the spreadsheet. And likewise, the third volume bar looks to be about double the first two, which is also what we can see in the spreadsheet. In summary, it's important to realize that candlesticks give us a visualization of the trade history. But if we are only looking at the candlesticks and not the volume, a good bit of the information is lost. When we add the volume, we are getting a clearer picture of the trade history during each period. That's all I wanna say about volume for this video. The most important thing to realize is that the price chart is a summary of the trade history. And when we are looking at candlesticks alone, we are leaving out quite a bit of information regarding the actual trading activity that occurred in each period. When we add in the volume, we get a closer approximation of the trade activity in a visual or graphical way. Before we wrap up with this video, I want to bring up something I said in the last video 
video when we were discussing candlesticks, I referred to the concept of a candlestick as being a simple to understand. And I wanted to just say that I don't prefer to use this type of language in general when discussing new concepts. Whether or not something is simple really depends on a lot of factors and is specific to each individual. So I just wanted to say, if you ever hear someone say something is simple and you don't think it's simple, don't let that discourage you from asking questions. And if you do think something is simple, there's always room for improvement when it comes to understanding.